Hey everyone, this is Vicki from Messy Table Studio with a video today about the um, extra things to put into the copy journal. I have only worked on it just these two pieces that you're about to see because I've been distracted by some other things. I'm taking some online classes and I've been trying to catch up on those lessons after not doing them because I was working on the copy journal. So I'm playing catch up. So every other thing I do is the um, fodder school stuff and then copy journal and then fodder school stuff and copy journal. So here I'm cutting up the paper from the copy journal, the extra pages, and I'm going to make a pocket. And I completely forgot that I really wanted to sew it. And I'm thumbing through this stuff to see if I can find anything I like better than what I picked out. And that's too small. And I thought about putting words. And I thought, oh, fooey. All right, so I found uh, parts of the cover that I'd cut off and saved. And I took some scrap coffee dyed paper I had in a basket, which I think you're going to see later in this clip. And um, I'm just cutting the sizes down small enough to go into the book. As you can see, they're kind of random sizes and colors. And there's the scrap. That are my lar Those are my larger pieces of coffee dyed scrap paper. It's a thin, it's a skinny basket, I swear. <laughs> I'm trying to cut down. So I'm just folding stuff down so that I can fit it in there. I really wanted to do two little extra journal books or some kind of little books for inside the journal. So I thought, well, I have parts of the cover and they're just small enough that it'll, they'll make cute little little books as inserts. I'm going to draw lines around this so that I don't have to fool around with measuring and that kind of stuff. So I'm just going to take the pencil, draw the lines, and then I'm just going to cut. And no, I did not do this on the new paper cutter. <laughs> I did this with the, the X-Acto knife because, honestly, it's just easier to do it this way for the time being. It's a small thing. And there we go. I'm pretty pleased with the way it is. And now I've got to decide, uh, well, what I'm going to do is trim off a little bit of the extras that weren't quite as straight as I would like or might have stick, stuck out on the edge. And so I just trim that off and put it inside. I'm like, well, that's good enough. <laughs> so I trim up the um, cover because there weren't straight lines on it. And I've decided that I'm going to do the three-hole pamphlet stitch. I'm clamping it down with the bull clips so that um, it won't wiggle when I go to sew it. I found some brown, I don't know if it's flax or what it is. And I'm going to use brown since coffee. I'm going to go ahead and use the brown thread for that. And like I said, I really don't measure how much thread I I don't do the two and a half times rule thing. I just whip it out, cut it off, thread the needle and go. And there I am putting it through the wax thing, more wax on top of wax. And it gave me a little bit of fight back. I did not pre-do the holes. I stuck the needles in there, the needle in there as I went. They may not be accurate, you know, but who cares? It's junky paper or leftover paper. I really don't care that it's not perfect. I really like the way it looks. So I tried a couple ways to think of uh, ways to close it for closure. So I had this coffee dyed or tea dyed uh, sheet, cotton sheet that we got rid of or we're going to get rid of. And I rescued it and coffee dyed it. I thought, well, I'll just tie this. I'll loop it through there. 
and tie it, but it didn't hit the middle section. And then I tried tying it on the outside. And of course, it wasn't cut long enough. <laughs> I try it again. Nope, still doesn't go the middle. Well, if I scrunch it down, maybe it'll work. All right, so I scrunched it down. I tied it in a knot to keep it in place. And then I tied it here and tried to get a bow. But again, it's cut too short for that. I managed to make it work, but it was so bulky, I couldn't take it. I was like, no, I don't like the way that looks. So I take it apart. I thought, okay, now let me let me use the, the larger part. So I split that in half. And I try this again. <laughs> I don't give up easy. I'm like a dog with a bone. You know, since it didn't work the first time, we're going to cut a new piece of sheet and try the same silly thing again. <laughs> What's that uh, definition of insanity? Doing the same thing over and over and expecting different results. Well, here's your fine example. Oh, here we go. Tying it in the middle again. And then we're going to try to tie it in a bow. And like, oh, my word, it's too big. So I'll wrap it around. Nope. I'm not sure that's going to work either. So let's tie it in a bow. Nope, we're not going to do that. So we take it off. Nope, not yet. Now I tie it in this big honking bow. <laughs> and I'm like, oh, no. That is no, 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 no. It doesn't matter how much you fuss around with it. It's still not going to be what you want it to be. But I keep trying. And then I cut it shorter. <laughs> like now I've got lots of little short pieces. And I think, okay, that looks all right. I got the bow in there. It's not sliding around. Let's try it in the journal in the pocket I'm, I'm going to make to put on there. So I'm looking around. Oh, look, this will make a lovely pocket inside and I can put the little scrap journal in there. Good idea. Uh, you'll see in a minute. That's too big, so now i got to cut it in half. Then I put it inside the book. Nope, too wide. Got to make it smaller. What am I going to do? All right, since I have bulky books to put in there, I'm going to give it little gussets. So I did it at about a quarter of an inch on each side of the future pocket. I scored it about a quarter of an inch on each end. Not at the bottom, mind you. So I'm taking the acrylic nail file and I'm running over it to get some of that slick stuff off, that sealant off of the paper so the glue will adhere to it. I'm gonna crease it. I'm gonna try it in that book again. Oh, guess what? Still too big. <laughs> No, okay. I'm looking and thinking, nah, too big. All right, so we got to fix that problem. So then I take it and I score it another quarter of an inch in. So one side is scored at a half inch. Once the other side is scored at a quarter of an inch. Then I have to use the nail file again. And I fold it. I don't know why I didn't score it at the bottom. That was kind of silly. That would have made it easier to put the journals inside the pocket. So I'm using PVA glue. The only thing I didn't do wrong was glue it upside down. Thank goodness I didn't do that. Oh, not, oh, forgot to glue it at the bottom. And because I have no patience, 
I'm going to shove that journal in there with the wet glue and that big honking bow. And no, it doesn't close all the way. Bow's got to go. <laughs> I was going to cut this part out so you would never see it, but look, it's not a perfect system. All right, we're going to put it back in there again. It goes in there much nicer, but it still needs a closure. And the book is still that. And I haven't even put any of the rest of the ephemera in there. Nothing. This is the first step. All right, so no bow. No sheet. Now that I've cut up the, the roll I had, I've cut it in three pieces. So I'm thinking about, let's see, well, can I paper clip it on here? No. All right, so I'm going to sew buttons on it. So this is a better idea. No. <laughs> I got miniature buttons. Brown ones, of course. I get my thread. And I'm thinking this is a better idea. So I'm going to sew a little button on in the back and a button on in the front. Well, I can't tell you the last time I sewed a button on something. I'm surprised I remember how. Now, I don't want the button to lay really flat on there because then I cannot wrap a string or elastic or something around the button to ensure that it stays closed. And I'm thinking about this the whole time I'm stitching it. Well, I need for this to be a little more flexible. So how do I do that? All right, this is a trick I learned, oh my goodness, when I was in a sewing class in home ec in the 1900s. Stick a toothpick underneath before you sew the button on, which lifts it up a little bit so that when you're done sewing, it'll be loose, loosey-goosey in there. And that way, it's lifted up just enough and just loose enough that I can wrap the elastic underneath the button. It's a wonder I didn't stab myself. Right, we're going to put a needle under there this time. We're not even going to do the toothpick. Now we're going in with the sharp objects. Yep, we're using a needle. Oh, my goodness. It was handy. What can I say? And it worked. All right, I'm thinking, well, maybe that's a good idea to do it that way. Nope. All right, so how am I going to tie this together? Well, I have some loose little pieces of black, thin elastic. So I thought, okay, let me try this. I'm just going to tie it. I'm going to loop it around. And in the beginning, it looks like a good idea. But when I loop it around, I'm like, oh, it's not going to stay on there because it's too small. I mean, too large. So I try it again. <laughs> I never do anything once. <laughs> so I'm going to do the thing. I'm going to tie it and I'm going to try again. It takes me a while. That kind of fiddly stuff is not business. This time, it's even worse than the last time. So I, I'm like, okay, I need to pick the knot out. So I pick the knot out. And I am just trying my best to get it to work. Too large, too small, but just <laughs> it's not my day. And I thought, well, you know, if the book expands, it'll be fine. Okay, I finally figured it out. I got it done. And it, it's on there. Lord knows how long it'll stay that way. It's book number two, because there were two. There's a really tall one, and there's kind of a medium-sized one. And these are all made out of the front cover and back cover of the ephemera book. I didn't waste anything on that book. All 
again, it was just a three hole pamphlet stitch. I just kind of eyeballed where it poked the holes. I wasn't concerned about spacing. This time I'm going to try to crease it with the scissors because, you know, reaching for the bone folder was too hard. Which was sitting on the desk. Now this time, I'm not putting the buttons on. I learned my lesson. I just took the piece of, of uh, elastic and slipped it over the cover. Sometimes this old dog does remember. All right, so I want something on the front of the book because it looks too boring. I find that because that's one of the cutouts from the from the front or the back of the book. So I'm going to rough up the shiny surface again with the emery board the acrylic nail emery board. I got it at Dollar Tree, so it was very cheap. And I'm going to glue that onto the front. I'm going to put some coffee colored ink on it. And then I'm going to squeeze the daylights out of that PVA bottle. Glue it on. Then I'm going to slip the elastic over it to hold that in place while it's drying. Ta-da! Done. Number two. And then I'm so good. I'm shoving both of those in there, and now it's even worse than it was the first time. <laughs> So now I'm left to try to figure out how to use these two things in this book without making it bulk up unnecessarily. All right, guys. Thanks for watching. I appreciate it. Like, subscribe, share.